order, select board meeting for May 8th, 2019. Can start right up here with the consent agenda. We have minutes from January 9th, 2019. We have warrants, PR1943, AP1944V, AP1944S, and AP1944. We have our planning, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission alternate, Mark Dunn. Um, and that is everything. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we can just do public comment. Uh, have a public comment here for the next up to 15 minutes, but we ask that you keep it to three minutes if you like to make a public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? No, okay, we can go right through. Um, town administrator report, do you have anything on there, David? We could uh, yeah, do that real get, quick. Or we get loaded in, so let's pull it up very quickly. We can't. Oh, it's in there now. You can't? Is it? I yeah. thought on mine. I just updated it and it, it's there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay, if I clicked yeah. on that, it's there, okay. Yeah, that's nice. Just send Jennifer down to take care of it. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Don, uh, first thing is the compensation classification plan study is moving along. Don Jacobs will be joining us a little bit later in order to talk about the progress made so far and where we're going to be going from here. Today? Today. Yeah, he'll be here. Uh, we had a meeting with the city of Northampton on the, uh, on the community compact best practices grant for IT services. Um, the city of Northampton has a Laserfish document management system, which they're willing to host for us for a small fee, which would be covered by the grant. And uh, we had a, an orientation meeting this morning, and uh, we're going to have uh, them come back for the department head meeting on June 12th and get this project underway. So this is, we received the, um, the state executed contract. So we're, we're ready to go on this project. Senior Center Construction update. We're going to be talking a little bit about this tonight. There's a change order to remove a buried drainage pipe, uh, which we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, there is a further change order to install a metal roof, uh, which is scheduled for your May 15th meeting. Zaturka Park, we got the certified votes for town meeting, so that paving is now scheduled for May 24th. The Park and Rec Commission are coordinating that final site work. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall, we'll talk about that tonight. Uh, there is a proposed change order for the Hockenham Cemetery marker restoration. Uh, this will be considered at your next meeting. Uh, it will be well within your budget for this project. Adult Use Marijuana, we're out to bid for the two licenses, two retail of the licenses available in town. The deadline is May 31st, and there's been quite a bit of interest uh, in this, so we should get a good pool of applicants for those two licenses. Our IT upgrade project will continues to move forward with uh, Acuity Technologies doing an assessment of the uh, the Town Hall and DPW Information Technology, and they're presenting a report. Uh, preliminary results will be communicated to us on May 13th. That report will be used as the basis for the next round of grants for IT uh, upgrades to the Town Hall and to the DPW. <coughs> we submitted the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant for uh, dealing with hazardous, hazard, uh, natural hazard mitigation associated with climate change. Sorry. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh. Just skipping down to what's new and different. Our project for converting the um, uh, collector's information, reconciling that with the treasurer's information is moving forward. The collector reported that we're about 90% complete there. We are bridging two um, uh, months, and so when we look at our April revenues, uh, there'll be a uh, 
Uh, one way of looking at the revenues is what's reported in VADAR, and that will show a dip in revenue growth because the collector's office will not have turned everything over to the treasurer and in such a way that it would be accounted for. But the cash has been <coughs> collected and will be transmitted. So I'll present this information according to what the VADAR report tells us as well as what we actually know to be true in terms of cash collections. So. Uh, just want to give everybody a heads up that the, we expect to see an anomaly in the April revenue uh, forecast, but this is uh, attributable to the ongoing conversion project over the collector's office. FY 2020 budget, we've had a town meeting. We were very successful. That worked very, very well for us. Senate Ways and Means Committee has released their budget, and uh, to date there's no cherry sheet to, uh, uh, to figure out its impact upon the town of Hadley. There are two numbers that are available through the Senate Ways and Means Committee budget report. That is Chapter 70 and the other is the Unrestricted General Government Aid. Figure both those figures match what came out of the House. So I'm optimistic that we won't see any major changes in the budget moving forward. The Senate will develop their budget proposal in the next couple of weeks. The FY18 audit is pretty much done. Uh, we ex will bring the auditors in for a presentation to the select board. And May 18th is the strawberry and asparagus supper, and June 1st is the asparagus festival. And we have a Memorial Day parade in there? Oh, yeah, we have a Memorial Day parade <coughs> in there. That will be May 26th. Sunday. Sunday. Okay, thank you. Um, let's just uh, get a couple things here behind us. Uh, how about that we move just quickly to the debt exclusion ballot? Um, how about, um, or do we need to do the sewer We could do that. Yeah, no, we well, could do Or are we going to wait? Coming? No. Okay. Yeah, we could we can do the sewer impact so fee real quick. Do you have any updates for us? Did you file the application? We did. So And what did they, they say getting back to you? He knows we're in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he come back with hundred and eleven thousand and he said that that was per his calculations. Um yeah. That was the application. Okay. And he come up with the, the calculations and it come up. I don't know how he come up with 111 because it was 160, then it went to 140 and it came up to 111. Uh, and I asked him how we could adjust that to what real numbers are. And he said he couldn't do anything. And I told him that our next step would be coming to the board to present you with numbers that <coughs> the machines actually use and what we anticipate she's got the the numbers and the other thing is that you know we're, we're looking at if, if you want to go like on a year and say all right let's start now one year from date of operation and you want to revisit it we don't have a problem paying more than you know the, whatever we agree on tonight you know that way everybody sees exactly what the consumption rate is you know, that's. So if I can just tell you like what that graph shows. Mm -hmm. um, it's the different machines. We actually go down and we empty our machines every night. So that way we have a, an exact number as to what our machines do. In a 24 hour period. Right. So the different colors are different machines. I mean, as you can see, the amounts that we get on the different machines are there's no predicting it. There are several days where you don't even use a machine. Um, so I guess what that boils down to is that it's hard to say, it's hard to make a statement that the machines would run consecutively every half hour. And if they did, we'd be more than happy to pay the, 
the 111 plus some, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, you have the water bills, our water bills from our previous year, 2018, which shows actual usage. <coughs> um, and sorry, would this be um, for? This is for our, our laundromat that we currently have. Right, and would the number of machines be identical? Yeah. No, they're actually, we have 24 machines in our current laundromat. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. so I, with the mat, with the little layout, I showed you, <coughs> we, we're putting in 20 <coughs> machines. Okay. And is this? You're putting in how many? 20. 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have how many in the other place? 24. 24. Yeah. So my figures come out to be that we used a total of 8,426 cubic feet. That was the total for 2018, which equals 63,030 gallons total for the year. 63,030 divided by 60, 365 days is an average of 172.68 gallons per day. And that's based on 24 washers, mm -hmm. not 20. How many was that? I'm sorry. That's based on 24 washers. How many gallons? Uh, six. I think you've got a sticky on your oh, last right page. Yeah. 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 63,000? So if I did it with my calculations, and if I took the 63,000 and, and even divided that by 20 machines, as proposed on what we're doing here in Hadley, comes out to 3,151.50. And then if you multiply that by the 1550 that is required by the town, it comes out to the 48,848.25. So the other, and the other point that I want to make too is that the population in Winchester where we have our mat, laundromat is 4,400 people. The population here is only like 900 more. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty similar. So uh, how in your, maybe it's on the application, but how many gallons are they assuming that you, you will use based on their formula? What, what they are they didn't give for? us that number, yeah, but they're saying 400 gallons that. per machine per day. Per day. I'm coming up with 325 gallons per day per machine per day. Excessive. No, the Title Five. You know, if, it, if the Title Five that, guidelines, I'd be happy, right. but I mean. The Title Five guidelines <coughs> say four to use four hundred gallons per machine per day, which sounds outrageous when I can actually present you with real numbers. You know, some of the machines are top loaders, which are actually for the the old generation. You know, like my mother, she likes the top loader. She knows that most people don't like the digital ones. So there's some machines that are really just there for <coughs> consumer convenience for, you know, for all walks of life, you know? So just uh, how many gallons per machine per load does it use? They're all about seven to eight. Seven to eight gallons. Because they all have a diaphragm. Most of them have a diaphragm in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So they all have like sensors in there. So depending on how much clothes, they might not use it. And a lot of people nowadays stuff so much in there, I don't mean, know how their clothes can clean because they just kind of roll around, you know, so the water's just there, you know. So no more than eight gallons? No, I mean, that's... That's what, the top. Yeah, that's the, what... These uh, new models, yeah. You know. Yeah. What did you come up with there? Three... 325 yeah, gallons The original estimate was three or four that I sent you way back. It was, yeah. yeah. And that's <coughs> based on eight gallons half hour cycle, it's about 384 gallons a day if it was running 24 hours a day constantly. So it's, it's not that far off, really, as far as... No, it's, it's pretty accurate. It's not far off from what? It, what your... <coughs> the projections of, of what is being put in the formula there of... Uh, oh, that was... Of 325 gallons a day. Okay. Based on your eight gallons per load uh, if for in say a 30 minute cycle you're talking 384 gallons if you're running 24 hours a day constantly so we'll say maximum number of customers uh, possible right. if right. you're in a 24 hour operation so you're, you're not too far off um, and it's not going to be a 24 hour operation yet right. it's right. going to be you know 7 to 7 or right. something 12 hour yeah. but I, I assume that the 
calculation uses the worst case scenario as far as. So the cal the calculation that is used by the town is the Title V, the septic system. So if this building had to be built off the sewer system, what would uh, DEP require the capacity of the septic system to to be? And it looks like in the neighborhood of 325 gallons per day per machine. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what is suggested. Um, it does, you know, obviously say that we can appeal that, and that's why we're here. Yeah. And we, and we want, believe me, we want to pay an impact fee, you know. There, yeah, we just want it to be fair for both sides, you know. We don't want to say, yeah, we agree to 111 and then eight months down the road to a year, you know. I mean, one of these machines is $13,000. That's how expensive these washing machines are. That's The technology has come so far. You know, the speed queens are just, they're not ones you go down to see as and buy. Uh, okay. Well, I was just going to say, I don't know, David, maybe you can say, like, in this circumstance, what are our options as a select board? Well, the history of this um, sewer impact fee is that it was created by the Sewer Commission back in the day when the Sewer Commission was a separate legal ent 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 entity. Um, they created it through special legislation. They operated it, created a number of precedences. And then when the select board, uh, or the town, unified the fire, uh, the water highway and sewer into a unified DPW, the select board inherited the sewer impact fee with all the precedent that had already been set. What we've done in the past is that we've offered payment plans. Uh, we've also looked at the, the formula to see if if things have changed since 2008, I think was when the formula was put together. Uh, the, the, the money is supposed to be used for uh, managing and upgrading the sewer treatment plant, in particular anything having to do with managing or increasing capacity of the plant. And we're beginning to reach that 80% threshold where that's a magic number where DEP will come in and run the show if we surpass 80% capacity on a year-round basis. So that's what the money is used for. This is how the, the process was put together. Uh, it's by the Title V based upon the engineering costs for upgrading the plant. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, you inherited it with precedent already set. But the select board has tried to work with applicants in the past to come up with some sort of <coughs> affordable and reasonable payment arrangement. I would like us to take under consideration because I think when Title V went into effect and they had these amounts back then, they certainly weren't taking into consideration the change in what could happen to a business or what the water use would be and I almost think that it should be on a case-by-case -case basis um, seeing that they present uh, the amount of what the water would be for 24 machines uh, I would like to see what this does I think we I would like to charge the impact fee uh, for the first year um, revisiting it after we see what your water usage is at the start of your um, thing. I, I would like to think we could maybe do the impact fee for $48,000, uh, 48848 um, which would still be a, the amount of 63030 per year, 20 machines. Um, I don't know how the board feels about that. So you're saying charge the charge them the 111. I'm saying charge them the 48,800. And then revisit it at the end. Of and then the revisit it usage. at the end of the year mm -hmm. to see what your. Um, so where it and goes you'll have the, the numbers number. because it's right. your. It's your water. It's not like we can yeah. change the numbers. You'll have the exact numbers. <laughs> right. Except for it's discussion. I just would like people to chime in on it. So I would suggest if you're, are you you're going to be up in seven to seven. Is that what the plan is? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So eight to eight or whatever. Like yes, like about 12, 12, 12 hours a day. 12 yeah. hours a day. Yes. So I would cut that 100, if we have the authority to do this, David, um, cut that 111,000 in half and uh, 
go with that for an impact fee with a written agreement saying that we will revisit this and if you exceed what we're charging you uh, on, on, you know, initially here, uh, if, you're, if your usage is above that. And we'd go off of, I'd like to see it go off a rolling 12 month period because when the college students are here or not here. Um, and then, you know, we may uh, implement the remaining amount of that impact fee if it turns out you're using significant Based on, yeah. Whatever exactly. it goes over there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. You know, the but numbers that we... That which, which is close to the 48. Exactly. So just slightly higher. Yeah, 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 I just, I just figured cut in half. Right now, then we would, uh, you know, adjust it. Because if it's 12 hours, I, that's based on a 24-hour 24 24 hour estimation. Operation. So then mm -hmm. we just... Mm -hmm. you know. John? Can we do that? <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Super yeah. expert here. Hang on one second. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me get back to my notes. And just a question for you: Is that a fee you're comfortable? If it was half <coughs> the one hundred eleven thousand that we've proposed, is that something you're comfortable paying at one time? Can we we'll spread that out? Because the initial staff <coughs> cost is going to yeah, uh, we're going to have roughly close to half a million invested. Yeah, yeah. So that's that works out um, about half of what. Yeah. Okay. And I guess no, if that, we're making a motion, we could always determine if we want to make it a three-year. Uh, payment does that sound here. good over the course of three years? Oh, I, yeah, you know, how much? Yeah, I figured four, years. That 12, not four years. Yeah, what have you been doing? Like forty-eight months? Is that my it standard? It depends. Some of these uh, depends on the business, the size of the business, um, uh, financing, timing, and so forth. So, in general, we try to get it done in a, about four payments of either four two years, years or three, three years. years. Four years even. Did you just say that that's 12 hours, not 24? Yeah, my original calculation was 12 hours. That's that's 12 hour calculation you got, David, not 24. 111 is for 12 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four years. Uh, okay, so we're we're eliminating the option of cutting it in half, or. I mean, it's. I think we should still do that. I think that you know, I'm it's okay. Good with revisit it in the year time to see. We're the revisiting the logic. Okay, yeah. the logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, exactly. we're running some checks. Yeah. I'm okay with cutting it in half, but just under the. Uh, it needs to be in writing, though, that if if you're over, uh, then there's no revert back to the full amount. Right. Then we. Can so now like a four-year payment plan or something for Is it going to revet the full amount or what we use above and beyond that and we add to that? We would like to visit that at that time in a year's time Absolutely. to see I what would, the calculations are. Yeah, and it, in my impression, it, it could be a sliding scale. So you That's know, if you're asking. using 55% so more, we'd say it's 55% mm -hmm. of the full amount right. instead of... Right. That's what I'm asking. So it wouldn't go yeah. all the way back up to the 111. Yeah, but it'd be like you use 10 more gallons, so now we're going to 111. That would be my understanding. I think we can put the language in there that it's not to exceed the 111,000, but it'll be up to the board to decide at the time. Yeah, as what far the as, yeah. Correct. So it's not good. Right, as long as it's on us. Yeah. Jamie yeah. said on the sliding scale, so... Do you need a payment plan for half of that amount or not? Well, we just did it there. Just doing it for 48, for four years, it's a, almost $1,200. Plus, we're going to pay you the sewer and water fees on top of that. You mean 12000 yeah. no, Not 1200 You want it per year? Oh, you don't want it per month? I didn't know how you... No. Yeah, yeah so maybe maybe we, we have oh, okay. the broad contours of what we need to do, and maybe we can sit down, we can hash out the details okay. and bring you're, it back. To you're looking like at a monthly payment rather than a yearly oh, payment? Oh, I didn't know how... We didn't I know, know how you did, did it. it. I didn't That's know if you did it monthly or not. We usually do we it don't, We don't know how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You usually do it in installments of 6 to 12 months, depending upon the circumstances. Yeah. So payment... Usually a payment up front and a payment at six months or 12 months and then uh, continue with that, that until the payment is completed. Okay. Maybe talk to Sue or she, she, see if she can do a billing period. And you know. part of the reason for the installments and the well, larger... We do. We, though our water meters are read every three months. No, I know. Maybe she can so do it at... we at still at would know, you know, every three months mm -hmm. uh, once you start up what... What and then the we could do a payment at pay. that three month, every three yeah. months. Right. But we will, we will exactly. revisit the whole thing in a year's time mm -hmm. just to see what the whole year is. But you will receive three month bills. That's how we do the water bills. Right. right. Yep. 
and the reason so that the payments are set up that way is that typically we have maybe one, maybe two of these payment plans at a time going on, and so it does take Susan or whoever, uh, you know, their attention to send out bills individually. It's not like it's an automated system. Right, exactly. Think, yeah. So we're trying to right, they're on a spend as little time and effort on it as possible. Mm -hmm. so. so we would have, um, you come have them come in and sit down with Jennifer and and David. We can you David. David. Yeah. David. Okay. Well, I don't know what's on your plate. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to divide it, you know. <laughs> you got a lot going. Yeah. I'm sorry to ask you for yet another meeting, but I think that's probably the most between you and I, and the yeah. And we'll so we can set up the. We'll put something together and bring it to the select board. Is is there a license for the uh, laundromat? Do we have a fee fee for that associated with? You know, like a restaurant or any no, other. Not mm -hmm. for me. No. Okay. Uh, or for me all. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the board of not that you send out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. the board of health might have something, but that would be something that y'all would check in to. So. I, I was just thinking because that could be a good time to review the water usage, but we can try to set up a time too on our schedule. So. I don't know. Do they actually have to come back, or can we make the motion tonight and just have them set well, up? Well, I think the select board has to approve. Okay actual payment plan yeah. we well, could we could make a motion on the amount that we're yes, going yeah. the, the full amount that we want to charge right with the review subject period to, and then subject to working out a financing well, well why can't we just say right now what we want the financing to be because I think there are other factors that need to be taken into account like yeah. the precedent and what we've done with others and but that's Pardon. something you don't have to necessarily return for. Once David gets the payment plan, we can vote on that without you being here as long as you're yeah, okay with that. Yeah, that's what I'm so saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah as long as we know but I think it has to come where back. we stand yeah, right. and number, and we just got to make the logistics work you know, yeah. for the Correct. court. You that's don't that's the main thing. Yeah. You probably want to spend a little bit of time looking at your own finances and finding out what, what's a livable uh, time frame for all these payments to happen. Right. So yeah. Want to give you that because we know the first six months we'll be lucky if somebody comes in and once a day, you know. So I'll so make I'll them to take out of my pension. You know? <laughs> I'll make a motion that we reduce the initial uh, sewer impact. impact fee to 50 percent of 111,000, um, and that we will revisit this in a 12 month period from the time the laundromat opens. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we can then change that fee on a sliding scale not to exceed the original $111,000 projection. And then also uh, David will set up a payment plan that's uh, mutually agreeable. Second that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will call you tomorrow or whatever. I'm around tomorrow <coughs> or Friday all day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are they, is every source here? Present. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's go into the every source poll area. Seven o'clock. There's six fifty-eight. Close enough. We're good. Okay. It's gonna be quick and easy. Yeah. Um, go ahead. You can. So we come up with an alternative plan and no longer require uh, a bid span poll to be installed on Russell Street. So I think we're all set here. Oh, so you don't need the poll? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> That's okay with you. Sure. As long as you have the power there, we're good. Yeah. yeah, we found an alternative plan that was uh, a little easier to do. So. Okay. Okay. So this was for the senior center. So do we have to formally close the hearing? Um, this is not for the senior center. This was for a, um, a reliability. Um, the reclose are installed at 187 Russell Street. Oh, okay. Did we? There's a poll further to the... West that we voted on a few weeks ago? Uh, for the senior center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Well, there was one, but I thought there was one here at East Street and Russell Street. That's what I'm here for. Oh, um, okay. That's where he's talking about. Okay. East Street and Russell Street you're not putting in there? There's been three poll hearings in the last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one that I think is separate from the other two that went. And I think one of the other ones was for the senior center. Yeah. And one of the other ones was not for the senior center. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought it was in the general vicinity, but okay. Yeah, we've been in increasing our reliability in the area by installing some section lines and reclosers. So there might be a couple in that area, but for 187 Russell Street, um, no poll is required. Great. Okay. Can I 
So uh, <laughs> do we need to do any, any motions to no. let out? No? Right? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Sure, I'll see you again next week. <laughs> <laughs> going? That was the easiest amount of people we got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Do yeah, how long do we think the classification plan update will take? Do we want to? Quick and easy. It's going to be easy. more around 15 minutes. Is that uh, enough time? I can't set limits on the selectmen, but okay. for me, it's, that's more okay. than enough. Sounds like a plan to me. Great. <sighs> right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Don Jacobs, um, and I've been retained by the town to uh, to do what we call a classification compensation study. I uh, had a chance to meet with at least a couple of selectmen during the last couple of months. Um, I think you received from David, actually, before I started working, at an outline of what I call goal and objectives, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think we gave the board that back at the beginning. Um, the only reason I, I want to go back and just draw your attention to that one-page document. Um, it was my way of sharing with you uh, what the purpose of the study is, and if you recall, there were two key words in that opening goal statement one word being consistent and the other word being competitive. Um, in other words, everything we do uh, relative to compensation, whether we're talking about paying a physician or paying an employee, from my perspective, needs to meet those two standards. Consistent means we can explain, and competitive we have yet to define. Um, but I would suggest to you that as you become more comfortable and understand the process that we're going through in doing this study, just keep that in the back of your mind, that ultimately deciding um, we're based on where you are today in relationship to the marketplace, but also internally, whether or not you're paying positions and employees competitively is really, I think, the, you know, the basic question that should be asked when we do a study like this. Um, but also by emphasizing that goal statement, it's my way of saying to you what this study is not about, so that there are no misunderstandings, it's really not about cost. It's not about my recommending or suggesting or in some way uh, advising the board as to what you can afford to spend on compensation. That's not part of the study. Um, and oftentimes when people hear, see that word or hear that word compensation, uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding. They really, of course, equate the word compensation with dollars and cents. Well, we can't afford it or it's going to cost us X amount of dollars. That remains to be determined. What I'm suggesting to you tonight and my reason for wanting to be here tonight um, is that it's really about establishing a process. And if you think back again to that one page handout where I outline really three specific objectives. In other words, in order to do this consistently, in order to develop a process <coughs> that enables you to determine whether you're paying positions and employees competitively, there are three specific things that we've outlined as objectives that we're proposing to accomplish. The first one has been completed and that's the writing of a draft job description consistent with basically what employees are required to do and what ultimately the town will establish as the so-called minimum qualifications. And the phrase minimum qualification really means the minimum knowledge, ability, and skill someone is required to have in order to carry out their job duties. All of that information, so in writing a job description, all of that information has now been included into each uh, draft job description document. And they've been written consistently. In other words, the format, when you see the job descriptions, are now all exactly the same. And when I say format, I'm talking about the outline of the description. Obviously, the language, the words in the description vary from one position to another. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying all positions are the same, but the format is identical. So what I'm suggesting in that regard is that once you've approved um, a proposed classification plan, in effect, what you're doing is approving job descriptions. And more specifically, you're, you're hopefully approving a format to write all job descriptions for the town. Uh, I didn't mention at the beginning maybe because I thought it was understood, but let me make sure I state it. I've been asked to look at non-union positions. So there are, no un there are no union positions in this study. And I think you're aware of that, but mm -hmm. if you're not, you are now. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say non-union positions, I'm talking about regular positions. The word regular means an employee that's scheduled to work 52 weeks a year. They may work 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours a week, but the main characteristic that they meet is that requirement to work 52 weeks a year. And that's what the word regular typically means. So if there are other positions, and there are other positions in the town of Hadley, that are not quote unquote regular positions. In other words, you pay someone based on when you require them to work, or you pay them a fixed amount of money, your so-called stipend. Those positions are not in this study. Okay, just to kind of set the overall parameters. Um, 
So the first objective writing quote unquote accurate job descriptions basically has been completed. Uh, not to bore you with a lot of details, but that has been a fairly involved, and I know I remember the board was at one of the meetings initially with the employees where they really actively participated in filling out a questionnaire, giving them an opportunity to tell us where they spend the bulk of their time, in other words, what they, what they feel they, what they do, the so-called essential functions, but at the same time, it also gave them an opportunity to express to me in filling out a questionnaire what they felt were the minimum qualifications to carry out those job duties. So once the questionnaire was filled out, right at the beginning of the process, then the department heads were given an opportunity to comment on that questionnaire if they wanted to. That document then came to me, and from that questionnaire, we wrote a draft job description. We then sent it back to all the employees individually, so they each got back their respective draft job description, and we came back and met with them, and gave them another chance to tell us whether there were any changes they wanted to make to those draft descriptions, but also gives us an opportunity to explain to them the process, so that hopefully they feel more comfortable and they understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. All of that's been done. It took a while to do it, uh, but it's been completed. The second objective, based on writing a draft job description, has been to develop a classification plan, and that's what you have in front of you this evening. That's the second objective. Um, the reason why I had suggested to David at the beginning that once we reach this point in the study, um, where we've initially written draft job descriptions, and based on those draft job descriptions, I've had a chance to meet with all of your department heads and gotten their input as recently as today, uh, while I was out here this afternoon, and a lot of that feedback really gave me an opportunity to understand better how they're managing their respective departments and specifically the positions in those departments. A good example of that is DPW. When I met with Chris this afternoon, I learned some things today that I didn't know about because I hadn't really had a chance to really sit down and talk to him about a couple of specific positions which I'll highlight for you in a minute relative to how he's managing uh, those particular positions. Um, so based on writing a job description, I, I've now developed and am recommending to you at least the outline of a draft classification plan. Let me highlight a couple of things. First and foremost, um, if you are familiar with your current plan, you essentially have an exempt group and a non-exempt group. Um, di structured differently, but what I'm recommending to you, you really don't need to have two separate plans. Uh, what I'm recommending to you is one classification compensation plan for all general government non-union positions. The other basic structural change I'm recommending to you is that public safety positions, and again, I'm talking about specifically non-union public safety positions, so nothing that I'm talking about has in any way, shape, or form any impact on any bargaining group or anything else like that, okay? But what I am suggesting to you or recommending to you is that we take the public safety positions that are today in that general government plan and put them in their own separate plans, and that's what you have in front of you this evening, a separate classification compensation plan for non-union police positions, and secondly, for fire positions. The basic reason for that, a couple of basic reasons. One, to make it easier for the board and at the same time for employees to understand how their positions are being paid so that you avoid trying to compare public safety to non-public safety positions in terms of what they're required to do and, again, the knowledgeability and skill and so forth that I mentioned before. All that becomes a lot easier and you don't confuse things. By separating police from fire, we don't fall into that well, how does fire compare to police? A firefighter to a patrolman or whatever, we're not even gonna go there. Uh, it's just not really necessary. Um, and so that's the basic fundamental plan, one basic classification plan. So really what you have in front of you now, um, and it's really in, in two different documents. One is what I call a characteristic chart, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming you got this in your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other is an outline of a classification plan. In other words, based on developing a set of characteristics which do basically nothing more than explain or define what we mean by each grade level. So what I'm looking at right at the moment is the general government plan. And what you see in the plan initially were six grade levels. And each one of those grade levels you can see there's a bullet associated with it and I assume you've seen this. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. There's kind of a, a blank look on your yeah. face like, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, it took me a while uh, to realize or to understand that one of the best ways to communicate uh, what a classification plan is all about, the number of grade levels, is really just basically to explain it in layman's terms, not in numbers, uh, not in dollars and cents, but in basic what I call characteristics that as you can see outlined on, on this two-page handout, 
explain to you what the meaning is or the difference between each of the uh, grade levels. And you'll notice uh, that for the fire and or the police plans, there are different numbers of grade levels. The purpose of the grade levels is basically to describe different levels of responsibility within each group. That's why you have grade levels. And at the same time, the number of grade levels, the hierarchy of the grade levels, from grade levels one to what have you, um, is intended to match your organizational structure. So we're not developing grade levels based on dollars and cents. Your current plan is developed based on dollars and cents, which is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to understand. Or if you would explain what you mean by today grade level one versus two or three, other than the dollars and cents, it's impossible to explain it. That won't happen again. Once the board ultimately approves a plan, and in doing so, understands what the meaning of each of the grade levels is, then it's relatively easy to explain why position, a position is at one grade level and not another. Again, not based on dollars and cents, but based on different levels of responsibility. So that word responsibility, and there's different words you could use like accountability or independence, uh, is really the basis upon which then a classification plan is developed. And again, the check and balance needs to match your organizational structure, whether it's within a particular department or, for that matter, the town as a whole. One of the reasons why you typically don't hear any complaints from police and fire departments particularly about the hierarchy, the grade level structure, the rank structure within a police department or a fire department, and why a sergeant's paid more money than a patrolman or a lieutenant's <laughs> paid more money than a sergeant or whatever the rank structure might be, is because they understand the different levels of responsibility. Again, it's not a dollars and cents question, it's a question of, from a practical standpoint, what are the different levels of responsibility within that particular department? So your police department or your fire department, when you look at the rank structure, the outline of the characteristic chart that I've given you for both police and fire, well, that's already in existence. You know, we're not creating something that's brand new, just the opposite. We're mirroring, we're matching what's already there. Whether it's a deputy fire chief position and how that compares to a, um, I don't know the rank structure, I don't want to say the wrong title. Uh, what's what's uh, lieutenant, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Captain <laughs> lieutenant. I just don't, I don't want to insult the rank structure. I don't have it memorized off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, as it goes from a firefighter to a fire lieutenant, mm -hmm. or from a lieutenant to a deputy <coughs> fire chief, it's, it's pretty practical, pretty basic. And when you look at the characteristic chart, you probably already understand it. You know, it's pretty simple, pretty, straight, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and so what I intentionally wanted to show you was an outline of a classification plan without looking at dollars and cents. That'll come in the next objective, the third objective. So I'm not asking for the board to approve anything or vote on anything this evening. I just wanted to share with you the process. <coughs> so essentially where we're at overall is that now I've developed an initial classification plan based on writing draft job descriptions and having talked um, to your department heads I've also now completed uh, a salary survey for you. Um, and we've surveyed roughly, or not roughly, I can tell you, uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight communities in the, in, in the Western Mass area, from Amherst to Barrie to Belchertown, Deerfield, Hatfield, Munson, Montague, and Southampton. Mm -hmm. And in selecting these particular communities, in meeting with your department heads particularly, uh, we've used both what I call operational criteria as well as demographic. And again, it, the real important issue with regard to the salary survey is how you use that data, more so than who you survey, you don't survey. So I'm sure right away you pick up on the fact that you heard me say Amherst. Well, Amherst is Amherst, um, much bigger than Hadley, but that's not the issue. It's not a demographic question as much as it is really more of an operational question, and it's how you use that data, or whether you think it's relevant to the other data you collect. Well, that's what you're ultimately going to see when I present that information to you at your next meeting. Okay, so where I go from here is that based on, unless you have questions about these initial grade levels of groupings, um, we'll then put together a salary survey report. I'll go back and meet with your employees, particularly your department heads, and share with them the market data that I've collected, and then at the same time also share with them uh, my recommendation in terms of how to use that market data to help us develop salary ranges for each of the respective grade levels. So unless something's jumping out at you this evening and you just have a real concern about you, how you see positions initially being classified 
keyword being initial, the draft is without looking at dollars and cents, uh, that tells me initially how to use the market data. Now, one last thing I just want to mention is that, and it gets back to that word competitive, uh, what ultimately I'm recommending to the board is that there are really three criteria that we use to define the word com competitive. The first one is obviously the market data. The second criteria is the rate of pay of the employee, whatever that happens to be today. And the third criteria is how long the employee has been in his or her current position. So what I'm suggesting to you, what I'm recommending to you uh, this evening is it, it really takes those three criteria. For us to recommend to you that a position and or an employee is being paid quote unquote competitively or not, we use those three criteria to do that analysis, to do that evaluation. So it isn't just market driven uh, data that becomes the be all and end all, or for that matter the only criteria that you use as a guide, and I think that's the key word, to help you decide um, what you think is a competitive salary range. So the combination of grade levels and salary ranges for each of the grade levels, using the market data, using the rate of pay of the employees today in each of their respective positions, and thirdly, how long each employee has been in their current position, that's how we'll ultimately, at the next meeting, present to you a compensation plan. And when I use the word compensation plan, Initially, I'm, there's really two parts to it. The first part is the salary ranges, which again uses those three criteria that I've mentioned. The other part of it is obviously how to pay the employee. So that once you're comfortable with how we've gotten the grade levels, secondly, how we've used the market and the salary data to develop salary ranges for each of the grade levels, at that point then, we'll talk to you about different ways to both hire an employee, and then secondly, how to retain an employee. And that's the plan. Nowhere in anything I've just said to you this evening is cost necessarily a factor. <coughs> that comes last. In other words, based on a plan, then based on what you feel you can afford to spend, then the question is simply, you know, what's the best way to spend the money? So okay. just a quick question, just we have Please. a 715 here. Right. But, um, one of the positions that's not in here is we've added a human resource director, human resource oh, manager. Oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know you that. That's what I thought you meant. So, I mean, I think logically it looks like it's going to fit quite nicely in grade level four, but That's right. you're probably going to want to be aware of that. Yeah, I think, that, Dave, have I given you a draft description for that? I, I can't remember. I oh, yeah, that, you did. Um, and we are waiting for town meeting to approve that budget. Right. So. And, we, and again, I, I'm, I'm glad you raised that point. I, I wasn't aware that you actually have approved the position, but uh, classifying it becomes that easy. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, we, you have a general understanding of what the level of responsibility of that position, and then when you go to compare to other positions, what we're trying to do is compare comparable positions in terms of not that they do the same thing, because they obviously don't, but the question is do they have comparable levels of responsibility? Okay. And if not, you know, what are they? Thank you. Does in, anybody have any other questions? Yeah. In general, you don't look at education or experience or anything like that? Yes, we do. That's part of the job description. Those are two they're in each one of these levels? Yes. Really, Absolutely. It doesn't show it here. Yeah, the only reason I'd have an, I've just tried to highlight what I think are the most important criteria to make it as simple for you to understand as possible. Within each grade level or within each rating of a position, there are actually 13 rating criteria, education and experience being two of the 13. All I've done here is highlight for you the most important. So in other words, when you look at, for example, general government grade level one, and, and I promise I'll, I'll stop, um, you notice it says direct supervision in bold print. And then it gives you an explanation of what we mean by the phrase direct supervision. It doesn't say high school degree, associate degree, or anything else. It describes a level of responsibility, which gives you the flexibility, frankly, to decide, well, you know, with an entry level position, which is what direct supervision means, well, it kind of makes common sense that the minimum education level for that a position in grade level one probably would be a high school degree. Whereas if you go to the, um, well, I don't know, any of the other grade levels, the level of education and or experience, you have flexibility in deciding what those minimums should be without necessarily pushing a position from one grade level. To, that's not what moves the classification of the position. What's really much more important is, again, what I keep saying is the level of responsibility. And you'll have, I think, a, once you see the job description and you see all 13 of those rating criteria, uh, I think you'll have a better understanding of, you know, what I'm rambling on about here. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Jacob. Thank you very much. Uh, last but not least, time frame wise, uh, David and I are meeting next week. Uh, I've, as I said before, I've collected the market data. I hope to have a plan, meaning grade levels and salary ranges, 
This is only a working document. It may not look exactly the same as this once we look at the salary data. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not a so-called final recommended, recommended plan. Uh, you'll have it done, it'll be done before the end of this month. Okay. That just to give great. you a time frame. And then I welcome the opportunity to come back and show you a complete plan. Everything but the employee part. You'll see the grade levels and the ranges. Once that's approved tentatively, then I think you're ready to talk about how to pay employees. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks, you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, David. Okay. Now we have a 715 dog hearing. Um, just like to say that this is uh, this is a hearing to consider a vicious dog complaint. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is bound by Mass General Law as to what we can do regarding this complaint. There is a thorough appeal process involved with this. Um, the board can make a determination to dismiss this complaint to see if the dog is by definition a nuisance or dangerous. Um, and I think that's about all I wanted to say just to start the hearing and let you know uh, what's happening. Anyone that is here to be testifying in this dangerous dog hearing, can you please stand and raise your right hand so that I can administer an oath? Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony to be given in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would the animal control officer uh, identify yourself, your position, certifications, and report your findings to the select board? Please. Yeah, my name is Kyle Dragon. I'm the animal control officer for the town of Hadley. Uh, hired in 2015, certified by the Commonwealth in 2016. Uh, we're here today in regards to an incident that occurred on April 18th, in which two, a do two dogs, alleged to blood Mr. Garlinski, uh, breached private property and attacked a dog belonging to the complaint in Ms. Chudzik. Um, just before 7.40 a.m., Ms. Chudzik called 911 on the 18th. She reported to dispatcher her dog had just been attacked and pinned to the ground by two dogs. Um, this happened inside a fence horse corral on private property of her father. Uh, during this incident, the complainant advised that her dog was pinned. Uh, the attack only ended after a short time once a horse exited the barn, startling the two dogs. She was then able to remove her dog. Of note during this, the complainant became concerned for the safety of her dog during the attack, as well as an eight week old puppy that was present and a juvenile child of a friend that was also present that was in her care. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Chudznik, Chudznik. Uh, Chudznik mm -hmm. uh, would you please uh, identify yourself and give your recollection of the incident? Suzanne Chudznik, um, 6 West Street, Hadley. Um, so that morning, um, I had gone to my father's house with my, my friend's daughter and my two dogs, my new puppy and my older dog. And <clears throat> my daughter's friend and I were standing in the barn, literally like, here's where we're standing and here's the doorway to the barn. And she and I were standing here with my puppy and we were talking about the horses. And I heard my other dog start yelping so I mean literally steps I look out the barn door and that's when I saw the two pit bulls pinning my dog to the ground and I'm like oh my god Haley we gotta help her you know so we run out of the barn and get into the corral and the corral is from where we were probably to the wall is, is how far the, the corral was um, and I'm like oh my god if you see the puppy that's it. So I scoop up the puppy, and I get my friend, I, my daughter's friend, I put the puppy in her arms, and I shuffle them into the barn and close the door because I was afraid that the dogs would go after them. And as I was doing this, my, one of my horses came out of the barn, and kind of out of character for her, she's kind of trotting out of the barn with her head down, and it startled the dogs and they kind of fell back off of 
my dog, and that's when my dog ran over to me, and I picked her up and I put her in the barn and I closed the door and to make sure that they were safe. And the dogs started to run off, and I took a video of them as they were leaving the corral, and that's when I called 911. And when um, you know we were waiting uh, for the police officer to show up, and we stayed down in the barn, me and my my friend's daughter and the and the dogs, because I was afraid that you know the dogs might come back. And at that point, I wasn't sure where they were. I kind of looked out the barn window to see them off in the corner of the pasture, going into the woods, and like they were heading towards Rocky Hill Road because there's another pasture or field there. And when the police officer finally got there, um, I looked to see that the coast was clear and we carried both dogs up to my truck and I put my friend's daughter and the two dogs in the truck because I figured they'd be safe there. And that's when I started speaking with the police officer and as I was telling him what was going on, what happened, I can hear on the scanner, they're saying, oh, there's a report of the dogs over on Rocky Hill Road. So, you know, we're talking. The dogs come running back through the yard again. And he's like, go get in your truck. Because we didn't know what was going to happen. So I get in my truck, and then I started taking another video. Why not? And then he's just, you know, I'm like, What's, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And he's like, I'm going to watch them and see where they go. And then they finally, you know, caught up with them. I, wa I watched them as they ran over to my uncle's house, from my father's house to my uncle's. They were hanging out in his yard a bit, up the driveway. And then I guess they finally, um, when they were on uh, Breckenridge, that's when they finally um, caught them. And from there, I, you know, I don't know what happened, but I know that Kyle um, asked me to to go and and um, write down a, you know an, an incident report of what happened. And my my friend's daughter, she also went to. She would have been here tonight, but she's back in Ohio. Um, so they they do have her statement also, and um, you know. The, the whole thing is you can't even be on your own property and be safe. You know? I mean, is that how we have to live in this town? It shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. I mean, don't people want to be safe in this town? I even made sure I stopped and told a couple of people that I know on the street that have small children, because I told them you might want to keep an extra eye out because they're probably not safe either because those dogs will go after anything smaller than them. And they're big dogs. And that day, <clears throat> I, I had to go to the vet with my new puppy, and I had them check out my dog also. And, um, you know, the vet said she seems like she's got a bruise on one of her legs, and she seemed very sore. And she was she was at walking like she was very sore the next couple of days. You know, my dog weighs 26 pounds. Those dogs are probably 80, 85 pounds. They're three times the size of my dog. It's not much of a, um, you know, competition there. Not much of a, you know, even fight, especially if you got two on one. So, I just really would like for my animals to be safe and everybody else's, but how are we going to come about that? Um, it's kind of up to you guys, but, um, you know, just things like this shouldn't happen, especially a second time around. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dagen, do you uh, have any questions? For her? I do. <clears throat> Ms. Treslick, what would you say the distance was from your father's property to Mr. Golinski's property approximately? It is at least three quarters of a mile, probably closer to a mile. Okay. 
Did your dog during that time breach any of the property owned by Mr. Garlinski? No. Were any of the dogs known to you from any prior occurrences? Yeah. Yes, they were. Puppy Puppy has um, attacked my dog um, a few years ago, probably about mm, six, 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 six years ago. And the other one, Darius, I, I never knew him to be aggressive. But he was a younger dog then, and well, sometimes they change. I don't know if this Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grolinski, would you please identify yourself and make a statement on our ask any questions? Yes, I am Ed Grolinski, the owner of the dogs. It is my fault the dog was loose. Puppy, puppies on rehabilitation. She had Lyme disease last winter. I got some medical records to prove it. She will have some full disability for chronic pain and be limping. So I was uh, running her, trying to get her back in shape under vet's orders, and she tried probably chasing coyote or deer. And so it's, and the, both dogs are neither bother for people. I have the police report. And the police did see the dogs up her place, and I don't believe my two dogs attacked her dog. Like she says, her dog's 26 pounds. My two dogs are roughly 160 pounds together. If they attacked them, her dog would be a pile of fur. So that didn't happen. And I have the police report here saying they looked at Ms. Chudzik's dog and saw nothing wrong. And in the past, when I was with Ms. Chudzik, I was up her house, her dog come out, my dog was in the vehicle, that case could have went either way. But she also accused me in the past falsely of saying my dog bit a horse. And I got the old report from, from a meeting that was never proven. Now here is the police report. And they said all her dogs look fine. So basically, if my two dogs attack you, I mean, you're talking 100, 160 pounds compared to 30, there's going to be fur flying, there'll be, be blood. And a bruise or two, you probably banged them off the truck bringing them in. Here's a police report. This is my first bit of evidence. Who wants to start? I'm in violation because I did let the dog get out of my sight. And here's a medical report on the dog. He probably will need surgery. It's like 700 bucks. I put an x-rays last fall because they're trying to diagnose the problem. So he's actually on the disability list. He's probably 50% capable of what he used to be. She reported that, uh, let's see where this is. Ms. Chuglow backed in, asked if the dog had ever attacked anyone, never another person, and Ms. Ms. Rilsky says no. Ms. Chudzik, Susan, stated that the dog bit a horse in the past, but there's no record of this on, particular, on this particular dog. In other words, she's made false accusations, which are proven by this, that weren't proven at all, and my two dogs attack hers, and no blood or fur missing, that's impossible. And the police know that her dogs were in perfect order, no hair parted, neither were mine, no blood. So for some issue, she could have been nervous, didn't understand it. It doesn't match up to the police report. Because like she said, her dog's 26 pounds. Any more questions or? Kyle has a question. Uh, yes. Kyle, yes, you'd like to make Mr. Gossie, what would you say the distance was from your property to Ms. Chudzik's property? The main farm is probably a half mile from Mr. The, her parents' property. My house is closer to a mile. A mile? Yes. Right. And also, Mr. Hardwick, when he was over, he said a dog was walking funny because it does have some chronic injuries and it might need surgery. So it's, uh, they shouldn't have been here. I, I don't deny that. I'm not denying that. The idea is there was no vicious attack like she says. All right, and do you do agree that Puppy Puppy was found in, viol in violation oh, yeah, of a dangerous dog order right? issued on 4 thir 13 from this Yeah, because I didn't realize he healed that good. I gave him an extra pain coach. She, I heard extra pain coach. She made a little farther than I thought. Hmm. So it's uh Per the requirements of that order, is Puppy Puppy supposed to be kept confined? 
Yes, unless they take it from Brian. Per the requirements of that order, is puppy puppy supposed to be restrained while in an automobile? Yes, but under the current condition, that would turn into animal cruelty because we're chronic pain and injuries with a hip. So I put a heavy chain or put a muzzle on. I had to carry her for a month. She could not get out of the house. I built ramps the front. I got a pin all set for her. So I got a ramp and a pin, and when I bring her out of the house, because she's on a disability list. So that's why I did break that rule, which I should have, you know, I could, but I'd be jailed for animal torture, and I figured enough common sense between the board. You look at the medical reports. The dog is hurting. He got chronic pain. And why should I add more pain? Technically, animal cruelty. You put a heavy chain on. I didn't tell you about that, but I got the paperwork here, so it will come out. And as far as for the insurance, that's the other one. My homeowner's was canceled after uh, Poochie was euthanized, so I got another company. And uh, they said they might be able to get in that fair plan, but there are certain dogs they don't want on the list. And both those dogs are friendly because Miss Chuggs had played with Puppy Puppy in the past when she used to work for me. So it's it is Mr. Uh, Cook, Med Garius, and the others. So it's, uh, they're not all that bad. All right. um, but, is Puppy Puppy allowed to run free? No. I know that. I admit it. she was. I was training her because she was on the disability list and she was moving. I said I gave an extra pain to her. She was a little farther than I thought. But she's still, even Hardwick says, she's not moving that well. But she did cover some ground. And I am in violation of that. I'm not denying it. But what I'm contesting is if my two dogs attacked her dog like they said she did, we go to a funeral. 160 pounds compared to 26. And she accused me to pass falsely at the selection meeting which Ms. Chungle took in a statement. That wasn't substantiated. So. So there's been a little bit of bad blood between us. Officer Jack, do you have the copy of that order from 2013? I thought we had it in here. If not, I got one. You mailed me one. I got the current statement, so let's see the. Here's something we can look at. Paper copy. I think that might be it. And then uh, my other question is. You've dealt with these dogs in the past, I assume. I have not personally dealt with these dogs in the past. Lieutenant Cook dealt with them when he was the animal patrol officer. Okay. And then were they vicious when you approached them, or did you? When I approached them, yeah. Uh, when I approached them, it would have been on the 24th. That was the first time I personally met either of these dogs. Yeah. The uh, when I issued notices to restrain following the incident on the 18th to Mr. Gerlinski, um, I the dogs were not vicious towards me at that point in time. Can I ask how were the dogs, they were running loose, you know, were on the property of Miss Chudznik, and then they ran away. How did they get back to you? Cops called me, they tagged them from Kamaski's house, because they made the round, probably got so a coyote did, did trail. Did the cops pick them up? No, no, no. no, no okay. No. Hardwick says the dog was very friendly, he was impressed. And so I met him at uh, the other cop's house, uh, the guy who works for Amherst, uh, across from Record Ridge Road. Okay. So I met him there, the dog, I picked up the dogs that went with me. Then I ran into this fellow later. Okay. They're on the way back home. They're almost there. And there were no trouble through the other yards. It went by Mike Kowalski's place. He got goats. He got all kinds of animals. And none of the pins were kicked in. Nothing like that. So it's a, it's a matter of interpretation, what you call it, an attack. So can is I... It, uh, well, there is, a, there is, I hate to say this to you, Ed, is there is a leash lock. Oh, I know that. I was trained but dogs and disabilities. I made a mistake. I, it doesn't matter know, whether they're I, on guilty. disability. Not, I know that, now, but that's why on. I did. I didn't let the dog loose. I don't let the dog loose every day by any means. You shouldn't let the dog loose any day. I know, but he's hurting, so the vet wants to get him back in shape. You that's why I did. You need a big enough pen then. Well, oh, I got a big enough pen, but I'm trying to rehabilitate him. I got all of that. Put look him at. on a leash and walk him. Uh, I got arthritis, new hip and stuff. I don't that's want how to my daughter it. had to do her dog when he had an ACL done. I know, because I had to take her out for about a month when she couldn't walk. Now she's probably have surgery coming up. So I did goof, there's no doubt about it. What the penalty is, I'll accept it. I'm not complaining. What I'm disputing is her past history with me, and also these dogs are not that vicious. That dog would have been, look at the weight. Oh, yeah. um, and I can get I, the cop in to testify the dogs were nice, like he says. Talk about, uh, Hartman. Uh, heart rate? Or heart rate, yes. Okay, got it. Um, just a question for you. So uh, you were talking about, you know, your concerns about potential animal cruelty when the dog is in the vehicle. Yeah, because I have to carry him in. If I have to put a chain on or a leash, it, it's, he's unbalanced anyway. He's, some of his chronic pain might not go away from Lyme disease. Right, so the question is, the dog doesn't have to be in the car, correct? 
He likes to get out psychologically, you know, for right instead of seeing. Well, I wasn't talking about his mental health. I was just asking. Well, that's part of the whole picture. Have to you piss off a dog, it makes him more irritated. He got chronic pain. You put a heavy chain on him, and basically make his life miserable. He's going to snap at you. Just going I'm back, trying to avoid that. What, what I'm well, and what I'm trying to determine is if there's a possibility that you you are in a position to adhere to the yes. restraint requirements. Yes. I do. I'm paying for it. Not but, a big deal. But it's not like it's been years since I've been in here, so the dogs are all been good. So it's not a repeat Mitch, situation. I had a question for you. Did Kenny have any problem with the dogs when he came and collared them? I don't know to what extent. He never collared them. Heart right came in contact with well, with the dogs. You're saying that that he had located them in a couple of different places. So we they, they had seen the dogs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, even myself having had interactions with dogs, I myself, if I was in a position to come close to them, I probably wouldn't allow them to get close to me. I probably wouldn't even try to collect them without Mr. Grilinski being there. But you also had him up. Gary's in my vehicle that time. I guess I, uh, under your control. Yeah, so it was no problem. So it's not like it's a, a maniac dog. If I brought him in, he would start tearing the first person he sees. It's not that extreme. That's why I don't believe those two dogs attacked her dog. The evidence does not match up, the police report, and there's no marks on her dog, no marks on mine. Officer Dragon, the, um, it looks like there was a $100 fine um, in 2013. Is that uh, the result of the 2013 hearing? Is that? I don't believe that we imposed any fine at the time. Never I paid a fine. Just, I just, I believe we imposed um, just restrictions uh, pursuant to Mass General Law. And so, what's I mean, what's, what's, the, yeah, Dr. Mitchell, yeah. what's the, I guess, the, the fine or the, uh, the punishment for violating this, that danger saga? This is a document I've read in the code to read to you guys. That would be a recommendation of a finding at the end of this hearing. That's what that is. Ah, I oh, okay. okay. I'm That's sorry. I thought it was okay. April 13th review. Yeah. Okay. The hundred dollar fine would essentially be as a result of him uh, of Mr. Grilinski violating the town bylaw pursuant to restraint of dog. Okay. Not mm -hmm. for violating the uh, the order of restraint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grilinski, yes. at the end of the 2013 hearing on April 3rd, uh, there were several orders put in place. Uh, you mentioned the insurance. Yes. The one of the other orders was you was to construct an outdoor patio. Oh, yeah, that's been up. That is, and it is in requirement with the order. Oh yeah, it goes underground. Chicken wire, regular wire. All right. And do you have the muzzle and the leash with the, th the three foot leash with a three hundred pound brake? Uh, I got. I don't got the exact measure, but it's hit me enough. You know, I do have muzzles. I'll get a verdict from the vet and see what they think of it. I'll get their opinion. Because like I said, six, seven months from now, she might heal up good. And like I said, it might not. She might have two operations scheduled. If they do her knees or hips, she'll never run that fast, period. So her, she's not the same dog she was when she uh, got in a disagreement with Miss Chuswick's dog. She's just getting old and needs some parts. So. So the same that was opposed to her back then to now probably wouldn't be fair because you won't need 300 pounds strength to stop her. Is there a way for, uh, well, sorry, Kyle, the fault of you, to verify that the conditions are being met if we're to kind of re reaffirm what has been put in place? Yes, I can do an outside inspection. You can stop up any time. It's been here for years. You'll see the ramps I made for the dog when she uses those because she couldn't make it up steps. And I, I'm assuming that you don't need the board to that was six vote, years. Yeah, go on. To, to vote on a leash law violation. That's that's under your authority anyways, right? I think that's correct. So, okay. Mitch, six years ago you went and inspected what you had up there for the dogs at the time? I believe I had seen the pen before. So it was pen. all in compliance before? I, as far as I remember, yes. You still want to make sure nothing's been modified since then. I update the wire for you to get the rot through, so stuff like that. Right. So, it's so we would have Kyle go and inspect that again? 
and really has to, those dogs have to be restrained. Mr. Galinsky, there's no doubt about it. They're not exempt from any other dog in town. Um, can't Why do you say you were? Can't, well, I'm, I'm just, I know just let me finish my statement. Fair enough. They, you know, the animals need to be restrained. They need to be put in and kept. They're the type of dogs. One might not be one without the other, but when you have two dogs of the same breed, and they can, and maybe they were on her dog, and the horse spooked them. Now, that's a possibility. If the dogs and they didn't have, okay. And they didn't have a chance to finish the job they were going to do. They were, you know, pin the dog to the ground. You know, that's, that's the start of it. Spooked by the horse, they left. So Those dogs don't spook. They well, deal the with coyotes. The dogs should have been there in the beginning. I, I agree with that, but the idea is... So let's, that, not, let's not go there. They okay, I got the been, police report, so I'm not worried about it. They shouldn't have been there. I agree with that. Dogs need to be on your property at all times. They have plenty of them, like 40-some acres by there. So. Well, you ain't got 40 acres that have that are restraining them. No. I got a decent size pit. <coughs> yeah, I know. I'm just concerned because I have three kids, and I have you know, two families that dogs have attacked small children, and I just get concerned it was another dog this time. I have a dog, too. I, I have my dog on a leash and it gets into things with other dogs that the hunt dogs do it but i just am concerned well, i get two grandkids if four years old yeah i'm just concerned they've been okay with kids they never attacked a dog didn't show hostility towards him or mr cook in the past yeah and that's how the dogs that attack the children were too that i've had experience with so you know that would be my fear is just with a history and lots of kids in hadley and just would hate to see a child get hurt um, and possibly like a life-changing hurt. So that, that, that's what scares me in this case, but. Yeah, I, I think we need, you know, we need to impose strict adherence to the requirements that were put in place in 2013. And unfortunately, I think if there is another incident, and again, I'm sorry, we can't really take the, you know, you love your dog, you, you're gonna take the best care you can of, of puppy the reason, puppy. Yes. Yeah, but that has to be done within the confines of the restrictions that the board imposed previously. Yes. And like I said, it's the first time we saw him here in years. So overall, it's not like a repeat offender. This is not a habitual thing that they're loose every day harassing everybody or cattle or animals. So but they it's will all, never be loose again, will they? There's no guarantees. They'll have to accept dying taxes. Oh, you sound like somebody I know. Thank you. Oh, Don't say Johnny Mitch. Yeah. But the idea is, like I said, you could get a bad storm. There's no trees by the pen. I watch for that. So there's, you know, there's outside things out of our force. I could have a car come up, some drunken kid at night, runs over my fence, dog gets out. I mean, could happen, but not likely. Officer Greg, in, in, uh, in, in your opinion, if uh, you were to do an inspection and to ensure everything was in compliance with that 2013 order, uh, do you think this, these dogs could be safely maintained on his property? So, Darius, yes, as long as everything is fine and compliant. I'm a little leery uh, with Puppy Puppy only because there was the issue in 2013 in which there was significant injury caused. And then the one time the dog leased the property, we have a repeat occurrence. It wasn't a repeat. There was no damage proven. That's not a repeat. I have a statement from a vet that says that he evaluated the dog and that he found bruising to the dog's leg. Where that bruising came from, I don't know. I have two other people that gave statements that alleged that they saw both your dogs on the other dog. So. But the police says there's no evidence of any kind of hair missing, no blood. And that's 160 pounds compared to 26. So just... That's very disputed. The evidence points towards my favor because there's no marks at that time. Are you trying to tell me those dogs it wouldn't have broke skin? Is, is what I'm saying is that I get a little bit more nervous with Puppy Puppy because get the minute she leaves the property, yes. she we, we have a repeat issue. And as you mentioned, we haven't had anything on the logs for several years. So. I would uh, just... I'd like to get our animal control officer's recommendation in this matter, but um, just want to make sure we've heard all our questions, uh, comments, anything that people might have to add Double that's side. outside of what we've already said. I don't know if anybody has anything else. Good? Or you have I something, have something to, say? to say? Oh, you have one more thing to say, yes. I want to add. Yeah. 
I think it's clear based on everything that we've heard in the totality of the circumstances that it's very clear that we know something happened this on this particular day. Miss Chudzik, who's familiar with the dog, who has seen the dogs before, and Miss Chudzik, who was the complainant on the previous dog, she's even more familiar with this dog. It's also clear that the police arrived at scene, saw two dogs running, and we also have the report of the vet indicating that the dog suffered some type of injury. So I think that it's clear based on all these circumstances and based on uh, Ms. Chudzik's sworn testimony that it's more likely than not a dog attack occurred and it was Mr. Berlinski's dog, of uh, dogs. I also think that while I have no, uh, I have no uh, misgivings towards Mr. Berlinski, um, I've never had an issue with Mr. Grilinski personally. Uh, I think you as the board yourself have heard tonight from him this evening that he himself cannot guarantee that this dog will not get off of his property. The previous dog order from 2013 requires the dog be confined if outside of the house, confined to a pen. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grilinski has said here tonight he's got 40 acres. Now if Mr. Grilinski is a um, if if anyone within a town of Hadley has 40 acres, they can let their dog do whatever they want on their own 40 acres. Mr. Grulinski is different in that he is subject to a, uh, the findings of the select board in regards to dangerous dog. That is very clear and states that the dog cannot be unrestrained under any circumstances outside of his home. It must be inside of a pen, and if it's off the property, then it must be uh, it must be secured with a muzzle. While I certainly can appreciate the, the health conditions of, of Puppy Puppy, it's clear that those health conditions are not so grave that the dog cannot get a mile, three quarters of a mile to a mile away from his property and engage in some type of altercation with another dog. I would, and so I think that based on the entirety of everything here, I think that um, I think that any suggestions uh, that come from the animal control officer up to and including euthanasia would be something that you should consider. And with regards to Darius, uh, I believe that Darius should also be subject to similar uh, requirements as to what Puppy Puppy was imposed, uh, what was imposed upon Puppy Puppy. My only concerns there are Mr. Grolinski's willingness to abide by that order. Okay. I understand the procedures. Like I said, this dispute right here is, did my two dogs attack her dog? Cops said the evidence wasn't there. The vet says the dog was bruised. Did she drop the, hit the door and bring it to the vet? That's unknown. That's a gray area right now. So that I will contest. I'll wait till you're ruling. And then we'll go for that. Because the evidence from the police report, I can get Officer Hardwick in here to say the dogs were, he was impressed how good they were. So right now the big dispute is, were the dogs attacked or not? What her false testimony in the past was she brought false charges. But your credibility is zero. How about that horse incident? There's no such thing. Okay. Do you, uh, yeah. Just want to add on the horse incident, the, the absence of evidence does not mean that the incident did not occur. Ms. Chudzik reported that one of his dogs bit Ms. Chudzik's I, horse. I heard he said it bit my horse. I heard Sorry. that it, uh, Tommy Doubleday's horse, and I heard that from uh, Mike Shoro, because the dog come running over to his ho house after. Okay. So whatever. So uh, you know, I'm not from. I'm not familiar specifically with it, but I would say that if there was a report that we could substantiate that. The absence of evidence doesn't mean that something didn't happen with this dog. And, and but that's hearsay. And plus, the people who own the horse come up to my place, looked at my dogs, and they said they did not match the description. You're going to say that probably Puppy Puppy attacked them because of the vet thing, but that's not proven. So basically, it's uh, we each got our opinions, and uh, we I respect your board meeting. And like I said, it's uh, I did make a mistake, let the dog out, no doubt about it, but. He's overall a good dog, so I'm really not super worried. If he's a real bad dog, I would have shot him at Chelsea if he killed the dog there. I shot my dogs in the past. Out of control. Different reasons. I'm talking to here years ago. Now it'll probably get you for all kinds of charges. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, Animal Control Officer Dragon, do you have a recommendation to make? So, in regards to Darius, my recommendation would be that the board finds him dangerous uh, with the stipulations 
uh, similar to what Puppy Puppy had, I have written down here, so they can be entered accurately. Mm -hmm. um, the dog will be confined. Uh, the pen, the, the enclosure yes. that it has allegedly been constructed. Oh, it's there. Um, so securely confined indoors and confined outdoors and securely enclosed or locked pen or dog run area upon the premises of the owner or keeper, which would be Mr. Gerlinski. Uh, provide further that such pen or dog run shall have a secured roof, and if such closure has no floor secured to the sides, therefore the side should be embedded in the ground not less than two feet. Uh, provided further that within the confines of such a pen or dog run, a dog house or a proper shelter for the elements to be provided to protect the dog. Um, two, I would like the insurance for $100,000 as laid out in the MGL chapter 140, chapter 157. Um, for the, him either obtain a thousand dollars worth of liability insurance for Darius, hundred thousand, uh, yeah, hundred thousand dollars worth of liability insurance for Darius, or if he's unable to obtain, provide proof that he's attempted to obtain and been denied. Uh, and that when Darius is removed from your property, that he be secured with a humane muzzle and restrained on a chain or other type of device of a minimum tensile strength of three hundred pounds. And not to exceed three feet in length. So basically, that's your decision, Mr. Cooks, which I respect. So you guys vote on it to make this official, or what will I know today? Uh, what the staff just is? let him finish, and then okay, I'll I thought explain he was it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and that uh, you will provide the animal control officer or the licensing authority, or are they identified in order order information for which the dog may be identified throughout the lifetime, including. And not limited to photographs, videos, veterinary examination, tattooing, microchip implantations, or any combination of such methods or identification. Um, and then lastly, uh, that all orders will be in place within 30 days uh, from the date of this hearing. In order compliance should be subject to an inspection and verification by the animal control officer, whom shall report back to the hearing authority, which is the select board, if order compliance has been met or not met by the end of a lot of time period, 30 days. And furthermore, the animal control shall annually confirm and inspect all aspects of this order remaining compliant. This shall be including inspection of the premises and documentation to ensure continuous compliance with the order. Okay. And that's for Darius? That would be for Darius. Okay. Yeah, do you, are we to take these separately or do you? Oh, so it, it, the other, it's at the final discretion of the parent authority, the select board, uh, what the final disposition for puppy puppy is at the end of this meeting um, based on what we've heard it would not be unwarranted to pursue a euthanasia order um, given Mr. Gerlinski has stated that he cannot guarantee the dog would not be confined we have had two alleged incidents and the dog was found in violation of a dangerous dog order required to be restrained to answer your question I believe that you should take them separately yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, just I just want to say that um, you know we can uh, continue this hearing on another date if we want to, if we want to obtain more information, um, or we can make a decision tonight. But I want to put that out there as well. If you guys feel you want to more information about one of these particular dogs, inspection of the pen, whatever it might be, we could delay it and do it another night. We don't have to make a decision tonight, but we can also proceed with the decision. Could I make just one suggestion mm -hmm. that if you're going to put anything off for a period of time, I would at least recommend that you impose an order of restraint to confine the dog to the property at minimum yeah. and then revisit it at a later date if it's your pleasure. I'm okay, thank you. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I'm, I'm comfortable with Darius as far as making a decision tonight, and I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with your recommendations. Um, I would recommend and it's your authority and your discretion but uh the leash law violation obviously is, is something mm -hmm. that should be taken up but as far as um well let's just talk about darius for now yeah um i don't know what the rest of the board thinks i was going to make a motion to accept the recommendations of uh kyle dragon no on, second vote on darius and uh any further discussion i do have one thing i want to add um if i just want to let you know mr grelinski that if um if restrictions are ordered, uh, you have a notification of right of appeal. You have the right of appeal to the 
board's decision in the district court in the Eastern Hampshire District Court in Belchertown within 10 days of the order. Well, I know the clerk, but I already mentioned a routine. Yeah, I just yeah, want to have it on the record as part that's of the record. That problem. So. And I can get Officer Hardwick in probably for that one, something like that, because I'm definitely not going to restrict Darius. And like I said, it's very debatable of the impression of the dog fight compared to the police evidence on the report, her vet. The cops were very fine what they saw. So bottom line is it's, uh, it probably won't be resolved mm -hmm. today. It's not a surprise, but I appreciate your concern and I have no hard feelings against Mr. Chudzik. Mr. Chudzik here. So. In the last six years, you don't have a complaint on those two dogs being yeah. loose? No. There's None nothing, on record? There's nothing on record. Nothing yet. We've had any issues with the dog since the hearing in 2013 involving Puppy Puppy. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if some drunk driver hits my pen and night dogs get out, I mean, you're going to use the nizer for that, which is out of my control of the dogs. There's some things out of your factor. Well, I, we'll take that separately. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll so we have a that motion that on the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> any any further discussion? We we good here, folks. The board. All all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm Darius. Darius. I'm Darius. Darius. Yeah. To have it restricted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So my, my biggest issue with Puppy Puppy right now is I am allowing for the fact that six years has gone by. I think that should be taken into consideration. Um, I, I have had an animal, unfortunately, that wasn't wired quite right and we had to take some extreme measures because I was very concerned about the safety of a young child on the bike path. I was going for a walk. So I, it's, it's horribly hard and I get that. Um, but honestly, my issue, my biggest issue with Puppy Puppy right now is, is Puppy Puppy's owner. Because when we're working with the owner and the owner is in here explaining all of the reasons why it may not be possible to comply, well, well I comply that's, that's giving some me pause of, as no, to why... No, something's out of my control. I'm not going to let the dog out. The dog's been confined for years. And right now he's under training because of the vet thing, so I, get, I come a little bit of slack. He got out of county trouble, but he caused no damage while he was gone. No known damage to the police. But that, you're not going to let him do that. No, again. I don't. I was trained, she's doing better, I gave an extra painkiller. So I, bottom line, she's back in the pen all the time now. So, and she basically was there all the time anyway. Like you said, it's been six years. And the dogs are good to know. Uh, are they now registered in the town of Hadley? Oh yeah, I catch up there so often. <laughs> Have they I got their licenses? Yeah, they even got, <laughs> got gravy <laughs> shots. Self-control, David. Okay, so do you have a recommendation to make on puppy? puppy? So my recommendation on original findings for puppy puppy would be that if Mr. Golinski had not complied with the 2013 order, which had resulted in no structure of the pen, um, and that the dog was loose because of that, that the board would seek a euthanasia. Uh, it sounds as if Mr. Golinski has constructed the enclosure. It sounds as if he is, he was turned down for the insurance and that he's working on security. Yes, the fair plan is what they call it. So I, I would just uh, want to say that I, I understand there are some things beyond your control. Yes. But in the case of Puppy Puppy, I don't care if their tornado blows through and takes your pen out. Yeah. If he gets out again, uh, my opinion is he needs to be put down. Well, if he, if, regard, if, and I don't care about medication. I don't care about I, I, any of that. If he killed so. Chudzik's dog there or hurt her horse, I would have shot the dog there. Right. So I, mean, I, I just want to I make it no clear. I can no complaints with that either. Yes, yeah, well, I understand very clearly. And I don't care if it's within your control or out of your control. If, if he's out again, if he violates any of these dangerous dog orders, um, you know, our hands are tied. I understand. But the good news is he was out and there was no noticeable damage by the police. Is, is Puppy Puppy in good health? It sounds like he or she is... She weighs about 75 pounds. The vet says she's in good shape for her age, but she got, you know, she walks a little wobbly and stuff. She's not a whip. How old she, is she? Yeah, I'm just... 10 or 11, to... probably. Okay. Between 9 and I'm not quite sure. So I inherited those from my daughter. Okay. So she's on the downhill slide. <laughs> <laughs> but she ain't helpless. The only thing that I want to add to the board uh, is that, you know, while I respect you know, Mr. Grilinski is here in front of you and he wants to... He doesn't want the board to take adverse action against his dog, uh, and, and you know I hate to I hate to open up old wounds, but relative to when Poochie when Poochie bit Stephen Bristol in 2010 2011. Something like that, yes. 
that wasn't the case. Mr. Gerlinski didn't take the action in which he's purporting that he would take. And that was a person. That was an elderly person who was mauled. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Gerlinski didn't take the action. And he fought and appealed every step of the way relative to that dog order, violated the dog order. We basically had to go through the courts four or five times to get Mr. Gerlinski to abide by the order of the select board. But all, you don't. But also, Mr. Bristol was dumping leaves and twigs at my farm for free. He was on my property with a dog at bay. He's dropping off a 30 pack of beer. He's going through the slice of the greenhouse. I got a big greenhouse, 108 feet by 28. So when Mr. Bristol, tall guy, he stooped down. I think he stepped on the dog. Because a dog knew Mr. Bristol had never bothered before. It was one good bite in his elbow. I gave him a pose, turned a kit, took my sweater off, stopped the blood, brought him to the hospital. The dog already knew him. So I think he stepped on the dog, is what it was. Because he knew who he was. And like I said, he didn't have to be there. If that dog bit Mr. Bristol's house, I would have shot him there. But Bristol's at my place, getting a freebie. He was nice to drop off a 30 pack of beer. I think Lieutenant Cook's comment goes to, uh, he's asking us to consider a pattern of performance, which is what I was getting to. Is but there's no restrictions on poaching. But I, I took the legal process. I did the appeal. I think Mr. Nixon wanted to try to state the state law because I dragged you guys out so long, probably a year or two. Remember that you were a little bit upset about the time frame? You're trying to get state law Maybe changed. She was in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Dragon, uh, so your recommendation would have been to destroy uh, Puppy Puppy if he hadn't complied with the terms of the 2013 order. That is so correct. since it appears he has or may have, what would your recommendation be in this? My case? recommendation would be at this point is that we continue this till the next meeting. During that period of time, I will complete an inspection mm -hmm. to come firm that yes, that order is being abided by. Uh, Mr. Gerlinski, I will make a with him to view his property. Um, he can hopefully provide me with the documentation from the insurance company. I'm working on it. It's a slow process because they say they, the law is in your favor and you're out to make money. You can stop the pin anytime you want. I don't have to be there. Uh, I prefer you there. <laughs> Only because no, I, I, I would prefer you there because then Bring a thirty pack. We, we both know what happens there. <laughs> and if I have questions, you can answer questions. And I you got my cell phone. Just keep calling. Come on. So can I make a motion to uh, continue the hearing on Puppy Puppy and um, uh, Officer Dragon? Can I also have you touch base with Sergeant Hartwright too and kind of see what his impressions were? Of I will also touch base with Detective Coupion. He made first contact. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and I would like to reaffirm the 2013 order for Puppy Puppy with the understanding that if Puppy Puppy or Darius are found outside of those orders, they will be subject to seizure and confinement pending the results of a additional psych board hearing. So, so let me modify that motion. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move that we reaffirm the 2013 dangerous dog order on Puppy Puppy um, and also uh, continue this hearing until the next select board meeting. Second. And, and there should be, just a caveat there, there should be a fine imposed for... Uh, that is well, correct. That's uh, that we have uh, seen enough evidence as per the MGL to find a violation of the order, and there will be a fine for that. Yes. Are you going to uh, have him construct a second pen for a second dog at this time? or No, if he has one ten and it's of appropriate size for both dogs, that will be fine. It passed before it's going. If it is not, uh, he has 30 days from this hearing date to construct a second one and I will make arrangements to see him the first of the week. So we will come back in 30 days to, to continue this year? Uh, no, you're, you're going to continue for Gary's. Next week. You, you, you made up your mind on Puppy Puppy. I agree with that's not a problem. That's no, the same stat. So 30 days, No, nope. he had, it, if it did not apply, if right. he had none of these things, he would have 30 days to, become, to come into the practice. <coughs> okay. uh, within those 30 days, I would have to go and inspect and verify that, yes, we are in compliance. It sounds like marginally we're in compliance. Don't worry about no problem. So I will confirm that we are in compliance for Darius. So you want to come back next week? Yes. Yes. It's at 7.45. That will be the continuation of the public hearing. For Darius. Puppy Puppy we agreed on. No, no, no. We no, agreed on Darius. Oh, yes. Why do we have other questions? So that, that was the first vote. Yes. Okay, so what's Darius going to be now? Darius it's considered is a dangerous dog. Same order as Puppy Okay, puppy. I, will, I will contest Darius. I'll go to the clerk of courts. Okay. And I will agree with Puppy Puppy because Puppy Puppy like it says, he did do some damage to her dog, but her dog also came up. So I agree with that one. So I will contest the second one for I don't have to keep it confined because Hartwick spoke highly of them. So I should be able to beat that one. So so mm -hmm. next week we'll be reviewing Puppy Puppy. 
if we we've got a vote. So that's seven forty five. But the dog will be restrained until the appeal. Yeah, of course. Yes. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, if it's a found You have no outside. problem within the next week of showing them the pens. And Take your going on tonight if you got any balls. <laughs> so Why you in a hurry? Okay, so uh, any other discussion? <laughs> that should do it. All those in favor? Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, 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 no I didn't no, see you there. Was, Did you, if you have something to say? Following your vote, I can I can just okay. uh, ask of Mr. Olinsky. Okay. Another question. Go ahead. So the motion is... We're delaying it until next week. Continue. Continue for puppy. Continue Continuing for next puppy. week. Yes. Yep. So 745. 745. At 745. And, and, and reaffirming the 2013 order. Yeah, until all proper answer. restraints are confirmed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you agree that you're in violation of, of the leash law? Oh, no doubt my mind. This? I'm not denying it. So we stipulate to the $100 fine and no we'll problem. see the clerk tomorrow morning? No and, problem. And we'll only do one dog, one $100 fine, not two $100 fines. Well, it's not a fine for the... Well, yeah, you could. If you give me a break, so I appreciate it. The municipal bylaw does yeah. allow for the fine. Correct. Okay. So Kyle, no problem. Kyle will have the, the citation to the clerk's office by the morning so that you can pay that. Set up a time we can visit a pen tomorrow. How do you want to do it? I will, I will reach out to you. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Catch you guys again. Yep. Asparagus Festival is off the agenda for tonight. Um, yes, I'm going to have a meeting with her on Monday. I've reached out to all of the departments that have interaction with the Asparagus Festival, and they're letting me know where they are in the permitting process. Okay. And I'll meet with her on the 13th for to come in on the 15th if needed, if she has not met with the police or the DPW and her permits are not up to date. Okay. Well, it's coming up for June 1st, so... Yeah. That's, yes. So it basically has to be done the next meeting. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. She, she knows that, and okay. she's working on them, and I believe she's been in contact with the police. Uh, I reached out, I sent her an email uh, yesterday, I heard back from her, but I do know that MassDOT is in the process of, of uh, reviewing and processing her, uh, the access permit for Route 9. Mm -hmm. I was in contact with Jay Yield today via email on, a, on uh, a couple different occasions relative to the permit, so I know that's in process with the state. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we just need to take a vote on the debt exclusion ballot that was approved at town meeting. This would be a debt exclusion ballot for, um, thank you all for coming. Thank you. This would be for, let's see, I just wanna make sure we got it all. The skid steer, the hot box, the mini excavator, cleaning and repairing ditches, um, and that's, that's all. Yes, all those things. Um, Right now we have the date set for June 18th, 2019, from noon to 8 p.m. Are we all set with the room? They're all set I believe with school's the room. out. Pardon? School's out on June 18th. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other ballot questions we should put on? No, that's good enough, I think. Unless you have anything. <laughs> you gonna create some? <laughs> I got a couple ideas, but right it looks like it looks like I'm not going to convince you guys tonight. So, okay. What's oh. what can we throw on? There? No non-binding questions, like I always ask. That yeah, we never do. Like, like what? Go ahead. Take no, the no, vote. you go ahead. What do you want to say? Take the vote. We did. We took the vote on the ballot, but okay. Hi then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I didn't know if there was going to be discussion, but if there's anything, <laughs> now's now's his chance. What yeah. kind of non-binding question yeah. do you want? <laughs> Go ahead, move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say yeah, tear down North Hadley Hall. <laughs> okay, that's coming up. Um, well, let's put that on for a referendum vote. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. we've got. Were you thinking that too? Yeah. Oh that, my God! That I was, can't stand it. I got attic. That was <laughs> one of them. Well, yeah. I mean, if you want to go to North Hadley Village Hall, uh, we do need to discuss the next steps uh, in that process. I'm After more than happy to make a motion that we um, ask David and Jessica and whoever else is needed to let us know what it would take to get that as a referendum question. Yeah, just a non non binding, non -binding question referendum question. And then we could vote on it. Can we vote on it? Do we have time to vote on it? Later? 
Uh, you won't have time to vote on it uh, later, but you can vote on the, uh, the question tonight, and then we'll uh, get it over to Jessica. Let's do it. Okay. Well, whether, whether motion made. Motion to do that. Knock, to, how, how do you want to word it to knock it down? It would be a non-binding resolution yes. to demolish yes. North Valley yes. Village Hall. Yes. And preserve the green space. And preserve the green space. I would. I don't know if that's a motion, but I was going to suggest we have uh, the planning board, the historical commission, and the municipal building committee in and f here to have a discussion if we can tear it down, or what the process would be to tear well, it down. Bill made the he brought it up, and I told him after. Yeah. <laughs> and the historical yeah. commission is actually yeah. going to be discussing it. It's, it's just a non-binding question. It's a non-binding question. I mean, we can There's do a non-binding question. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, can we phrase it in such a way that since the green space seems to be uh, the issue. Uh, an mm -hmm. issue, I would say, uh, should the select board move forward with the... Uh, demolition or yeah. sale. Yep. No, I would say demolition yeah. of the North Hadley Hall and turn the entire parcel into green space. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's all going to be subject to well, financing well, and everything else. Anything else. Yeah. Uh, or you either yeah, like an A or a B. Just demolition or sale still. Yeah. Right. If, if I mean, there's there's already a town at. meeting vote to sell it. Yeah. 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 So we're still that. in the process of yeah. doing that. We can continue with that process. Yes. And have a non-binding vote. Just in general direction. Yeah, general direction. That, right. that the board See if there's any interest out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In what? Taking down, Tearing demolishing, and, and the demolishing it, and leaving it as park. We're in a bit of a bind. Isn't there a middle way? But What's the middle way? The middle way is to divide the open space so that you save enough room for parking. You only need 20,000 square feet for parking to meet the current bylaw. 20,000 square feet, you have 60,000 square feet on the property, that leaves 30,000 square feet for open space. Nope, you can't can do both. because it's all under Article 97 it's, uh, protections. Uh, you, you're still going to have to go through that. No, if there's if there's got it all, that down. got voted down at the, town meeting. Though. There's, there's the, no way around the protection. Because it, was, because it was all or nothing. It was all or nothing. Again, this is just an, it's just yeah, a I question. Yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. a question. That, but I mean, it's just, I, I don't think we've explored that middle ground enough. And, and uh, I'd be interested to hear what the people in North Hadley have to say. Maybe sure. a referendum is the way to go. Yeah. But, but you know, it's like you're saying, we either sell it with, with, and get rid of the open space with another crack at 97. Mm -hmm. Or you, um, or you demolish the building and keep all the open space. Um, I'm, I'm open to all. Yeah, I, all I, options I, in between as well. But I think we, uh, we yeah, want to find I'm not, that. I'm not trying to talk you out of that. We, I'm just we, trying to say there's another op There is another. You know, there's a lot of discussion at town meeting about it. That's why, I, I, if mm -hmm. if we had a little bit more direction of which way to go, I mean, it, it it's really not going to change my vote either way. I'd like to see the the whole property being sold. Honestly, yeah. that yeah, that's sure my too. personal opinion. But yeah. you know, the people yeah. the people in town meeting didn't want, want that. Come so on. now we need well, to look well, at. They didn't want to get rid of the open space. Yeah, right? they didn't maybe, want to get rid maybe, of the maybe open we can get rid of some of the open space. And yeah. Keep most of it for the access to the. You yeah. need a ball field. You just need access to yeah. the lake. And uh, we don't play. want an access to the lake. We don't want that. We don't. No, we don't. We don't want to be keepers of that. There's a hill going down there. And well, we I, I, I understand. No, I understand. No, we're not going to. That, DPW yeah. has enough to do. They don't need yeah. to be doing an access. Although okay. I thought I, I thought I heard Bill okay. say yes. that's no. what Dave, Dave's got a question here. Uh, uh, just uh, some information. So I looked into the possible uh, cost for demolition. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a range between sixty thousand and ninety thousand dollars sold. <laughs> Get out your check. <laughs> if we do, if Make we do, yeah. if we do uh, maintain access to the lake and develop it as access to the lake, there is a liability impact. Sure. So our insurance premiums would be higher. How much higher, I don't know, but there would be. But we could also just leave it up. Yeah, it doesn't. But not have access to the lake. Right. Because yeah. well, yeah. people are. Yeah. Thinking that the, 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 it would be nice to have a beach there. <laughs> it could be nice to have a beach oh, yeah. there, but you yeah. can really be, go swimming. You can float yeah. right in the lily pad. That's what I was going to say. All the lily pads you want. <laughs> I did talk to Randy Iser, and he can make a recordable plan to split the property into two for about five hundred dollars. Did you get a chance to speak with the real estate team to see what their projected value of just the sale of the hall would be without the association? No, I don't have that information yet. All I know is that um, 
Three million dollars is that roughly what we're looking at for repair it costs? Three point four million dollars yeah. to repair the building based upon two thousand three hundred yeah, dollars. Do yeah. <laughs> so I mean, so it's around five at this. It's either got to come down or it's got to get gone quickly because uh, I would be surprised if it makes it through another winter without re repair. Major, yeah, major yeah. repair. Yeah. Okay. Um, so would a ballot question be maybe one to demolish it, one to <laughs> split the property? And have a small section of green space. I don't think people are, are going to have enough information have to intelligently answer yeah. the splitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I and mean, I think that I, conversation can all take concept. place here. Yeah. Based, this is just simply a. Yeah, and based on town meeting reaction, I think the green space was the priority. So yeah. th mm -hmm. this, this way we can make sure that people are okay with tearing down the hall and keeping the green space and turn it into a grass field. Because number one, we still have to go through planning board. We yeah. may have to do the possibility of the ZBA yeah. or some type of rezoning for that building. I mean, so there's Too still much, so much more to that piece that people just don't understand. Right. Right. Well, the way I understand is we're going to lose two of the two historic buildings this year instead of just one. But you're getting, you're, we're begatting three brandy new ones. <laughs> They'll be historical in about 100 years. The, the, the <laughs> but the younger, gener the younger generation doesn't want to be keepers of these old buildings. As much as you might think they do, they don't. And I've heard it for a multitude of younger no, people. I, David can attest to that. I, I'm, not, in I, that range. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not arguing at all for the town to keep that building as a town building. No. I went we to Hunter School. We can't sell it. it down. We can't sell it. Then, you know, you got to take it down. I agree with that. We had we had opposition when we took down the old gym. And that was falling down. Well, so yeah. we have a motion. Okay, we have a motion, yes, and seconded. Right. So why don't we vote if we want to put this non-binding question onto ballot for June 18th? Mm -hmm. Do you have the kind of uh, phraseology that to encompass the green space issue and uh, demolition data? Uh, I'll, I'll work, more? Something, I'll work okay. something out. All right. Yeah. Okay. Got to get it to Jessica tomorrow morning. Though. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I ask how you, I, I have been in contact with the realtor and I told her I would get back to her after your meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. Can I ask her to continue to have patience or what, what guidance would you like me to give to her? I, I would just like to know the value of the building if we yeah, keep split off the keep ballpark. That. It sounds like the board wants to just keep going and sell what we can sell right now at yeah. this point. I'd say go, go for the sale of the yeah. building. Exactly. And and I mean, isn't that have... getting ourselves into more than, I mean, I mean, we can try, but I, with what are the historical restrictions we're going to put on just the building as it's written right now, we'd have to keep the whole thing standing and there's nothing. I mean, it seems like, yeah, we can put it up for sale, but you can't put a parking lot in, you can't change the footprint of the building because of the historical restrictions. What can you do? Well, that, that'd be the key for the, the real estate agent would be to come up with a value because basically what you're looking at is you're not going to turn it into an apartment building obviously because there's not enough parking for that right? yeah so it'd be very limited out of a one or two family two building condos, of some kind yeah something. and, and right. where is the line for article 97 land versus yeah. the building land you know i mean there's no the specific right that's true it's all of designation the it's everything there is article 97 so. except the footprint of the building right. so what can you do with that? Well, so they would only be able to have parking. You could park in the garage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They could take down the fire station. That's not really part of the original True. building mm -hmm. building but itself. So they could remove the fire station mm -hmm. from parking on that side. Yes. Yeah. So if the historical maybe a No, but it's, historic, it's not historical. It's a fire station that was built yeah, after that. Have a, a parking spaces. It's not part of the original footprint of yeah. that building. Yeah, I've I'm heard that from historical what's, people too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that is true. Okay. So, so I'm asking her to split out the green space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the green space is, is a non-starter at this point. I mean, that's going to it's, it's staying in protection based on how we vote. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, basically, find find the value of the building itself. Just just the building. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But with the possibility of of taking down the uh, okay. the little extension there, mm -hmm. the garage, the garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which which means there's there is parking. Yeah. So, exactly. Well, well, there yeah, could be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we need to vote on that? Yeah. Uh, we voted on the non-binding resolution, but not about putting
putting it up for sale just the building i'll make a motion that we um authorize jennifer to have a conversation with the realtor continue um, our pursuit on the sale correct um subject to the vote that was taken or based on the vote taken on town meeting floor regarding the article 97 and ask the realtor to um, revise their uh, estimate of sale value should the building be limited to the footprint of the building and the parking area around it. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, any other discussion? I just have one thing. Does that mean we can actually put it on the market? Yeah, I would yeah. say Does yeah. that include That's putting it on the market? Because yeah. we are kind of waiting for this Article 97 decision yeah. to actually put That's it on the market. So. Yeah, I would say as Absolutely. is without the ball field. Get exactly. it up there tomorrow. Okay. We're going to have the kids paint us on. Yep. Yep. Get all right. Tonight at <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And if, if I could just say my personal opinion on this is that if we're looking at $50,000 for the building as it is, mm -hmm. then I would think it would be probably in the best interest of the town to retain that land and tear it down and just turn it into green space and let us figure out something in the future than to sell it for next to nothing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be my... Um, but we'll keep the ballot question. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be an opportunity for anybody from North Hadley to weigh in? I, I understand there was a town meeting, and you know, but it was like, are we going to save the open space or not? We're not going to give it up. That's what they decided. But they didn't. There was no really discussion about what are the options there and how how far we should explore it. I'd love to have the. I mean, Bill Dwyer was from North Hadley, and you know, he has yeah. opinions about what to do. He said uh, tear the building down. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Right, that's his his opinion. I mean, I don't know. There's other people up there. And we're not making a decision tonight, Alan. We're just trying I to understand. get. I'm just thinking before this, the ref, people get a chance to vote in the referendum. Maybe there should be some further yeah. opportunity I mean, I, to I have. I would be a, happy to put it on our agenda in a future yeah. meeting, and people are welcome yeah. to come. That meeting up in North Yeah. Uh, people are welcome to contact us at any time we, now. <laughs> now that the kind of, yeah. Not that the conversation has started. I mean, yeah, yeah. let us know how you feel. Yeah. Uh, no matter where you're from, you know. It's, call them. Yeah, call all of us. It's. Yeah. I, I have no problem. Just for the consideration, though, that you know we are on a timeline here because uh, we're yeah. going to be talking about mm -hmm. big money very soon, and uh, winter hits. people are concerned about taxes as they are now. Just wait till yeah. we add another three million on foot. I personally think we need either to look at tearing it down and just get it done, or. Uh, get it sold. We okay. don't want We're it on our books. Because we, we, no. we don't want to get a $50,000 bill or something to upgrade the no. heating system and the roof and all these We're things. For winter. I'm just saying, yeah, we yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. Although we were ready to, if, if, if that article had passed at town meeting, it would have been on the market, but we'd still have to wait for the legislature to act, which yeah. is God knows how long that yeah. would take. Yeah. So at least now it sounds like we're making a cleaner cut and maybe, and maybe marketing the building is going to go nowhere, but maybe if it still could happen. All right. We'll find out soon. Sure. Let's uh, mm -hmm. move on. I think the last, th well, we have SWOT analysis right, update. Mm -hmm. uh, select board will discuss coordinating a new SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis for each department. The department's prepared SWOT analysis in fiscal year 2016. Um, put this on the agenda just basically to update the SWOT analysis that we did in 2016. I thought we could use this as a tool to look at all these things when it comes time to um, do performance reviews for all the department heads and just in determining what our capital needs are looking forward, what our budget needs are looking forward, if there's any kind of you know, opportunities for sharing information between departments uh, that we can use. So. Um, kind of just wanted to put that out there to uh, to get done and updated in town. I don't know if you guys have any comments, questions. On the only that. thing I'm just thinking about is the um, this la laser beach mm -hmm. um, project is going to wind up taking up some time mm -hmm. um, with everybody getting on board on that. So I think, I mean, the initial SWOT analysis, there's no question, there was a lot of time that yeah. they put into that. So maybe if we're going to ask them to do anything, we 
we hone in on specific areas and just ask them to review the original analysis that they did and then just provide, you know, if they feel that there's an update with this particular um, focus on, ca on capital. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was just, there's some pretty distinct tables in the SWOT analysis. Yep. They're one page, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could just, what all I'm thinking is updating those tables. Yeah, you that's know? A, yeah. And it, it, I just think that we need to make it clear to them that that's all we're asking yeah, for. Yeah, I'm not asking for a huge narrative and all mm -hmm. kinds of things, just a snapshot of what's going on and uh, what we can yeah, do. Yeah, we don't need to over and date them with more work right now. As, as you know, Molly says, they've got stuff that they're going to be doing for this fish thing. Yes, but, but I think if we limit it to what Christian's saying, then that's... And we give them time. Because they don't have anything else to do. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we keep putting more and more things on them to do. And I think, you know, we need to take a look at what we really need need from them. Uh, we put departments in capital and rotating them on what their needs were from the, you know, 2016 uh, analysis. And, you know, we're working on... Uh, updating the departments as they come up and I think that was part of what the analysis came by um, you know yeah, I'll say what you want but that's what, this is what I think at this point but um, it doesn't hurt for them to take a look at it and, and yeah. see what's what they need or what I mean I think about somebody like um, you know Mike Spanknable in particular a lot has changed in his department since he did it mm -hmm. you know um, but and then in, in other departments, there may be some capital, like, and Chris Okafer is a brand new DPW director, you know, so I can see the two of them maybe having to put a little bit more thought into it because Chris didn't do his, he inherited it. And, you know, Mike's just, we've, we've done so much in, in, in uh, and well, actually Mike's, and Mike's he's still so new at this point too, that not exactly sure if he would have a full handle on what his department, I know he has specific things that he wants to do with increasing uh, supervisory positions and things like that, but um, to actually go back in and look at the former SWOT analysis, you know, that would take some time for him to do that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, and the other reason too is just to get a feel for, you know, I feel like sometimes it's difficult to communicate what's happening in these departments and we don't get really big updates from each department head, what's going on. This is kind of a way to communicate what's going on in those departments to the select board and get a feel for what's happening and what their needs really are. Um, but, you know, it's... it's well, and what were you thinking, decision. time frame? I mean, like, give them, you know, to August or something to do it, or...? I think they need some time. For this. Yeah. I think we should... Like maybe have them do August 1st or something? Yeah, we could do that time frame. I was just trying to look and see what... Um, I sent you that revised that schedule. schedule. Yeah, because I wanted this to feed into uh, the performance reviews and those kind of things. So we had mm -hmm. that information going forward. What would performance reviews be? Typically? Right now in the schedule, you know, I have them kind of each major department head, um, which I've got five listed, or four listed, four listed, sorry. Um, so there should be five. Cause so be police and fire, them. we've got those linked together. We could separate them. Um, From a performance standpoint? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we would. I, I'm just looking at David's <laughs> updates oh, to my okay. schedule that so I sent him. Fire, DPW, so we have police, fire, town administrator, DPW, and director, inspections. and inspections. Yeah. yeah, total. So I was thinking we could do uh, one a month, well, July, August, September, October, but we could make them more lumped together. I was just thinking for us that way we don't have multiple people in here at one time. Mm -hmm. So that would start in July. What's on my uh, on the schedule right now? So they have so maybe the rest of May, June, and I mean we can push it toward the end of July. Well, or, or have a deadline in the order of that you're taking the performance reviews. We could do that too. So yeah. That whoever's coming later has more time. Mm -hmm. And I put public safety probably 
later? Maybe do data and inspections earlier? Yeah, so yeah that that. much change in the department. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we can shift it around. We know what David's SWOT analysis looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All is SWAT. lost. Yeah. <laughs> SWAT, SWAT. Okay. Do we want to take a vote for this? Do you or wanna, just kind of propose it? Do you and I want to sit down together and come up with uh, a stronger uh, schedule for all of this? Because it seems like it's all one piece. Yeah. And then we can bring this back for a discussion at your next meeting. Okay. I would just say I would defer to the chair to determine the schedule for this so we don't have to look at it again at another meeting. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Like that. Yeah. that way we don't have to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you don't want to talk about SWAT analysis? No. So exciting. Okay. All right. Uh, Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Um, quick update, uh, just date wise of the library. Um, we have a meeting, um, I won't be able to attend because I'll be here, but the next meeting is on the 15th. Um, and that is the bid opening. Of, um, or that's when the, uh, yeah, oh. when the bids are due back. So. That's the sub bits for the library? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's sub bits. Right. Okay. Sub bits, yeah. Okay. Sub bits, yeah. Good. I have um, general contractors. Uh, bids are due in by June 6th, and the sub bids are due May 21st. Okay. Uh, on the Senior Center that is moving forward full steam. We have a change order to vote on tonight for a clay pipe that was found uh, below grade. Uh, it was an unknown pipe. And we have a, I believe that's a $6,300 change order to, um, to remove the pipe and fill in that section where needed with gravel. It's been designed by the geotech engineer that we've worked with on the site, and it's been run by the DPW director to uh, approve. So can we get the DPW over there to get rid of it? No, can we not do that. I mean, it'd be in the middle of their the construction. No, site. it's it's under the construction site, and uh, my big question to all of them was to make sure that it wasn't a sub drain that was attached to the old hooker school, but it seems like, uh, according to the map and the directions, that it's not. So it's under the foundation of the new senior center, so they need to remove that. Are they going to remove the whole thing or just a portion they need to for the building? They're going to remove the whole thing. How many feet is it? Um, it's on that map. I just lost it. Pipe uh, was, no, it says eight. Eight feet two inches below grade. I think it's about, I want to say 30 feet long, but it might be uh, longer than that. Uh, it seems like a lot of money to dig up a That's what I'm saying, right? And, and, and unless we're talking hundreds of feet. I mean, yeah. it's eight feet two inches below grade. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. we don't know the and it goes took, down to 10 feet below grade. Yeah, they took four section. feet of, of cover right. off. So mm -hmm. uh, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve foot. 12 foot 2? Yeah, that's what they said, so that's... I mean, I understand change orders happen, and change orders is where, let's face it, GCs and others make their profits, of course. but, I mean, that's a little silly uh, without knowing how long the, the pipe actually is. Mm -hmm. They TV'd it, so that's how they... It might be... Oh, 60 linear so feet is uh, how long it is. Okay. okay. And... It's three thousand two hundred dollars for machine excavate and backfill. Twelve hundred forty dollars for labor for fabric, stone, and compaction. Uh, Twelve hundred dollars for three quarter inch stone material. Three hundred fifty dollars for filter fabric oh, material. Three hundred dollars for five percent OH and P, and sixty three dollars for the one percent bond. It's the cost breakdown. So mm -hmm. this kind of a big fight. <laughs> it's the next page. All right, I'll, I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Click out of that and go to the next page. It's right there, the estimate. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 A
a grudging And I will, I will let them know so they can proceed on this. The uh, and the roof has all been verified. Roof is coming back on the fifteenth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to do it on the fifteenth? Well, the email you sent explained it all okay. through warranty, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I know we voted at the last meeting about the loan getting moved. It's been it's done at the Young Men's Club. They, I know that Chris said they dropped two dump trucks. So I don't know. Okay. Yeah. They might have gotten it from the DPW then instead of from. Yeah, uh, yeah they. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, DPW okay. 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 Yeah. That's what we thought. No, but it, 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 got, it was taken from the DPW yard, not the senior center site. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's old loan from the elementary school that's yes. what they're using. So <laughs> yeah. what's, what's left of the pile? Yeah. It's it's been depleted. And then I just wanted to confirm with us here that we agreed to ten thousand for change orders without select board approval, but I'm gonna try to bring them all to the select board. It, was that the number we all agreed upon? It was ten thousand. Yeah. Ten thousand, okay. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. As long as we're aware of what's going on. Yeah. So have they removed the clay pipe already or not? No, no, they oh, haven't. Okay. Yeah, they were waiting. <laughs> the, they, they were, yeah. yeah I was figuring that's the direction you were going. Yeah, it's all done. Now that I asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, nope, that's everything I have. Uh, that's uh, everything on our agenda tonight. So motion to. No. Oh, I sorry. Have, I Announcements. Have, I have just two. Um, there will be a Mount Warner Road closure tomorrow. Um, so there will be a detour uh, throughout the day that's going to be doing some road work over there, culvert work. Uh, also a reminder to everybody, this week is graduation week and you'll have a mass exodus on Thursday going out, uh, students leaving UMass and you will also have uh, them coming in on Thursday night also because there's going to be an added function uh, Friday over at UMass. So this whole weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's Sunday, be will be quite busy and week nine will be quite busy. So just to give you a heads up. So I'm leaving the I just have a few announcements. I just wanted to, it's National Teacher Appreciation Week. I just wanted to thank all the teachers at our school for all their hard work and dedication. Thank you. And also it's National School Nurse Day today. So I just wanted to thank uh, Kirsten Kennedy at the elementary school, who I have worked with a lot with my kids um, as they're sick and called home. And then uh, Ann Mastra Totaro at the Hopkins Academy, who I don't know that well, but thank you. Uh, and then National just, it, it's National Nurses Week. Healthcare work. No. You stole my announcement. <laughs> yeah, well, you can get over there. And then uh, just uh, remind everybody Memorial Day Parade on May 26th. I just have one. Uh, May 16th um, is the silent auction at um, the elementary school to benefit the preschool. So I forget what time it is, but there is a board up in front of the school. So. Mm -hmm. And you didn't do it June 4th. Oh. Oh, yeah. We, we said this last week, but I just want to update everybody. Tuesday, June 4th. At 1 p.m. is the Senior Center groundbreaking ceremony over at the Senior Center okay. behind Hooker School. At 1 o'clock? At 1 o'clock. Any other announcements? Motion to adjourn? Second. Happy Mother's Day to all. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.